Let's get started. Uh, as Sada mentioned, it, I'm partner engineer on this platform uh, that we are building here for the community. And this is all started from community as well. So that's why we're talking about from community. And about being instantly, it's because uh, it's going to happen about instant articles. And you gonna, guys are going to learn how to start using if you're not using yet or even learn what instant article is. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the HTML word and how it works and why it's kind of slow to load p pages using regular links. Uh, I'm going to show these uh, how instant articles work better. There is no magic. There is just like a few uh, small uh, informations that we need to, to make sure that we're going to be faster. And I'm going to show you guys how to integrate with instant articles and also how community and how you can join and how you can help and make sure that this is going to be open forever. And by the end, as Sarah mentioned it, uh, there will be a Q&A session. So this is how it is starts, right? When you start typing uh, your link on your regular web browser or even clicking a link from any other website. Uh, and for example, this also happens when you have a story that was shared in Facebook and you want to click there to, to see how it's going to be open. So the magic begins. Um, the first time that you just reach uh, a link from another uh, website or web browser, uh, there will be happening these DNS lookup. And uh, I'm going to show here, uh, this is going to be a kind of simple way uh, or a envision everything that happens under the hood when you click somebody else's link. So the first thing that happens is the DNS lookup. And this might take forever, uh, forever because, for example, you are for, uh, assessing a link that is yourdomain.com. And for example, the link that you're clicking can be yourdomain2.com. And when you do this, you need to figure out, your browser needs to figure out where this yourdomain2.com is. And this starts with this DNS lookup. Once it figure out, uh, figures out where your uh, domain is, it starts the fetch of your HTML document. And this is, can take like a, a small part, part of the time because normally the HTML is just a text document, a few kilobytes, um, and then it's going to be the parse. So your browser needs to understand what is going on there and needs to start fetching the content like uh, the JavaScript links that you have there, the CSS, the images, uh, for example, the image that you might have on the, red, uh, on the header. Uh, and also, it's going to occur a new uh, an event there that I call draw. It's the draw event when you just first load your HTML document. After you've finished fetching all your documents, like your resources, CSS, it's going to happen another uh, event for drawing. And then you might see, for example, a few pages flicking. Because if your HTML document is structured in a way that the CSS changes right after loading, your page is going to flick a little bit. And now, once you have all the G JavaScript loaded, there is going to happen the ready document. And th this ready is still loading the images. Like, you still might have the, the images loading. And probably uh, right after the ready document, you're, you'll be good to go if you are using ads with programmatic JavaScript, for example. And of course, if you have a lot of images, a lot of resources, your browser is going to reach kind of limits for parallel loading which he will slow you down a little bit uh, on the browser. And after loading all your images and all your resources, you're going to be good to go. So of course, I was speaking and explaining all these steps and this kind of simplified way how uh, 
web works, uh, it's still a lot of steps, right? To get the content right after you click on a link and to get to know what is there and start reading. So how could you, how could you or we actually, uh, make sure that you're gonna uh, load this faster. How can we improve? So, first of all, what if you just like render the content from the same very uh, domain that you had before? For example, you are at Facebook. If you load the content from the Facebook, uh, there will be no necessity of DNS lookup. So, the first step will be gone. Um, so what if you prefetch the content from your page? So for example, there, there is no, uh, not anymore uh, DNS lookup, and if you prefetch the content itself, there will be no fetch at all. Of course, parsing, there still happen because you have the prefetched content there, and you have to render the page. So the parse is still gonna happen. But what if you take away all these JavaScript uh, elements and CSS because you have everything pre-configured before? And also, let's prefetch the images. So what happens here is that we simplified really much uh, all these rendering thing of the content. And there is no magic at all. Uh, we are just like improving and serving the content uh, in a way that it's gonna be much faster. And this can sometimes happen like 10 times faster or even more, depending on your network condition. And that's uh, what I'm presenting here. Uh, it's how Instant Article works. We wrap it up all these single features that I just mentioned in this uh, new project. And that's how it is. Uh, you just see the, the, the story on your newsfeed. It's a just one tap away. It's prefetched, as you can see here. Uh, it's right uh, opening. Uh, it's ready. Uh, and it's pretty faster than any other link that you might share on uh, Facebook because it, this was prefetched. And anyone can have the content prefetched as this. It's just a matter, uh, and I'm gonna explain here on the next few slides how to do it. And as you can see here on this small video, uh, all the components that we are rendering are native components. So, for example, when you are rendering a, a regular web uh, page, you have the struggle to, to see how this is gonna work on all the small devices and all the different uh, flavors of Android and different, like, uh, different resolution of screens and su support of devices, uh, Instant Articles does this for you. So you don't have to worry about every uh, single uh, device that is gonna be assessing your content. Under the hood, like uh, Instant Article is just like, uh, a r it, it's just like a regular, web HTML document, but it, with a small uh, differences. And I'm, I'm gonna show you uh, these on a uh, few steps here. Just like we have the header, uh, we you can have the image just like on the video that you saw. Uh, here comes the content right after the header. And you can put on the content images, uh, any other company like light shows, uh, maps, uh, links to any other thing that you might have. And for example, we have a few bunch of components that is there. And if you have a component that is not there yet or it's not implemented on our side, you can kind of use a um, uh, web view that is gonna be rendered just like an iframe inside the instant article. So. If we still don't support that component that you want to use, it's kind of rich component, we can have these as well. To integrate with Instant Articles, um, you can follow these steps. It's on this uh, web link that is there. Um, 
it's going to take like a few steps and you have to transform your markup into these previous the markup that I just show you guys. Um, and you have to set up uh, a few more things. But with the WordPress community, we saw the opportunity to build up the Instant Article plugin. And also here at the audience, we have a few other uh, plugins writer, writers that also built some, some plugins for WordPress uh, that renders and integrates with Instant Articles. So all those configurations and uh, most of the configurations that you have to do if you want to implement by yourself, if you're already using uh, WordPress, it's going to be one click away of installing and just a matter of configuring the plugin. So this is how the, the plugin works under the hood. For example, you, you have the article content that you're writing if, or any other publisher is writing using WordPress, and these will generate the regular web and also the mobile web version. And in, in, the, in the mobile web version is exactly where Instant Article Word starts. So you're going to have pretty much a, a bunch of content, uh, like a, a bunch of articles being published through this path. And what we've built here, it is a kind of, uh, so to have Instant Article, it's going to be transforming every single web, a mobile web view of your article into that Instant Article markup. And what we did to, to achieve this is we wrote this plugin and this plugin also uses a separate box here that is the SDK that transforms your markup, your regular web markup into the uh, Instant Article markup. So you don't have actually to know all the small glitches and all the small components that we have there into the uh, Instant Article Word. It's just like using the plugin and we're going to do all this job for you. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about these uh, plugins and a few pro tips right now. Like you have the, your web article that you might want to migrate now that you know how Instant Article is and, and works. Uh, you can recirculate other articles that you might have already published. So if you scroll down your article here, you can have these sections uh, for related articles. As you can see in the middle of the screen there, once you tap, uh, that's how you add this on the middle of your, of your article. And once you tap, and it is also an instant article, it's going to happen just like that. So this is kind of cascading navigation through the instant article world. So it's going to be pretty fast as well as your first click. And once you type back, you're going to just move back to your previous article that you were reading. And of course, you can set up like the title that is going to be there on this uh, uh, um, like this uh, related article. So it, it's pretty much like easy to configure as you want to. Is if you scroll down a little bit more, you're going to see on the footer session of your article uh, more related articles that you might want to, to your, your audience to click and to keep navigating through your content. And if you don't want to configure this, uh, Facebook gives this uh, for free because uh, all the articles that you might have already configured into Instant Article and publish it there. Uh, your content will be there for, for people that want to click and keep seeing your content. And the, here comes the pro tip number two. Of course, your publishers, if you're a publisher and you, um, you want to have money on, and take money on this because you want to keep your site going. So we, we have the, the tools for ad placement. And there are two that we do. One is the automatic placement, and the other is the manual placement. So what differs 
one from another is just like how uh, we're gonna calculate and position the 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 ad itself within your instant article. The, the first one, uh, it's gonna be calculated automatically. And the other, you can put whatever you want, like you can put right after the, 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 par the, the paragraph that you are mentioning about how cars are fast and good, for example, and right below it, you might show a, an ad talking about selling a car, for example. So to configure this on the WordPress plugin that we built, it's just a matter of saying which kind of, uh, of um, ads you're gonna place. Like you can use the audience network that we have on Facebook. There is uh, the possibility to use an iframe with a URL or any other custom code that you might have. So we can pretty much uh, support any kind of uh, ads uh, within instant articles. And, and also uh, about tracking, like uh, you might want to analyze how your audience is uh, accessing your instant articles. And we have two options as well here. Uh, one is the Facebook Insights, so it's just a matter of adding the app ID that you might already have and it's gonna be just like that uh, to, to have access to your um, insights. Or if you want to use any other third party uh, tracking code, it's just like on the bottom of this slide here. Uh, it will work just like an iframe and you can put any kind of code that you might want, to, want there. Another pro tip here, as you are using Instant Articles, uh, Instant Articles is a version for the mobile uh, view of your article. So once anybody shares this on their timeline or even through Messenger right now, uh, we can fetch and see if there is available uh, Instant Article version for that article that you're sharing. And once there is, uh, it's gonna be rendered as Instant Article. Uh, and for example, if you're accessing through desktop applications, uh, for example, Facebook on your regular browser on your laptop, for example, uh, you're gonna access the regular version of your article. So Instant Article re uh, makes uh, it so available for the, the mobile. And you should have like the, uh, we enforce actually to have the, web version of your content exactly the same on your Instagram article. So you can't have different versions and different content for the, the, the very same uh, canonical URL. And this tool, the, the debugger, uh, will help you to see how it's gonna look like on the timeline. Like we go there and we scrape the, this link that you're sharing and you can see how it's gonna look like for anybody, just like here on the right. And with this tool, we see how it's gonna look like and we can even like uh, check for errors and uh, force a rescrape if you just updated the, the content there. And here comes the part of uh, our takeaways about building the plugin. We transformed this integration that was a kind of uh, harder for people that were no technical at all uh, to, to make sure that this is easier to onboard into the program. So if you're writing a plugin, make sure that this is gonna be uh, easier for people to configure and use it. It was powerful, like the platform and the, the WordPress plugins and all the support that platform built here, it, it's really powerful. You can use hooks, you can do 30 plugins integration, for example, you have one public plugin uh, and you can build up in, on top of our plugin, for example, just by using the hooks. And this fits all because uh, 
Automatic has like VIP that provides like really huge contents and really huge uh, uh, partners that use uh, WordPress. And also like anyone here on this very uh, room here that just wants to start a blog from now, it's pretty possible. So uh, fits all uh, size of publishers. And of, short, uh, uh, of course, the community is really strong and participative. Uh, we have uh, something around like uh, 300 uh, people that already uh, shared and is reaching out us for the, uh, to have access to documentation and their difficulties and like providing solutions that they might uh, found out using our plugin. So it's been really richful and learningful, uh, like uh, really learning. We're, we're really learning about this community thing. I'll leave here a few resources and we're jumping to the question section. If you have a few questions, you can go to the mic here. We have a mic in the, in the center of the, this room. And I'm here to, 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 to answer. Also, I'll leave for uh, anyone that wants to go after us um, with this blue shirt, so it's going to be fine to spot me. And we can just go. Uh, I'll be around on the, on the hall as well. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Much better. Um, I'll start over. Uh, can you speak a little bit about the automatic ad placement and what the breakdown is on if you guys have done any internal studies or anything about uh, mobile ad performance versus instant article ad performance versus like how you have seen publishers react to, uh, to basically handing off their content to Facebook to handle? Cool. Uh, the, the automatic uh, ad placement works like uh, we do have a few uh, strict uh, rules to, to, to show the, the, the ads itself. So for example, you can't actually show an ad before, uh, I might be wrong with the numbers, but I'll, I can check later, but we have a, a strict rule to, to show right after 50 words. So. The, the automatic placement will do this for you. So you don't need to worry about counting the words. So now I can show the, the, the ad and every 150 words I need to, to have a, a spare difference between the, the other uh, ads that you might want. So this is just like uh, what makes difference the, uh, the auto ad placement to, to the other one. Uh, regarding the numbers, uh, I might not share this number because this is not yet uh, open to everybody. Uh, but of course, like uh, we can see a bunch of uh, more engagement with instant articles than, for example, uh, regular web uh, pages because of the bounce rate that you might have just because of all the, those features that I mentioned on the, on the, on the beginning. Like, uh, uh, like instant articles have a much lower uh, rate of bounce rate, for example. So uh, we're doing much better uh, just because of that. So this has some of the same characteristics of AMP. And I'm wondering, does this conflict with AMP? Uh, does it create a performance degradation if you're using both instant articles and AMP to, you know, get streamlined articles out to different locations? Great question. Uh, we are not competing with AMP at all because we are different, like, environments. 
So for example, you access AMP links through the, for example, if you search for something uh, on Google and the, the search results, if they are AMP enabled, will be just like enabled there. And we are talking here about the, the environment within Facebook. So we're not actually living into the same room, like any, any, any shared content in Facebook. Uh, and we are different, we're using different technologies as well. Like we're like native rendering content. Uh, it's, it's kind of different words, but trying to solve the same problem. I would post that way. I was hoping you could speak a little bit more about the plugin and from a backend perspective, what it's actually doing. So for instance, how does it know to serve the instant article version of the markup instead of the regular HTML? How it handles uh, some of the page builders that we're seeing out in the lobby where they're very heavily marked up with style as well as content? Cool. Um, the plugin itself uh, just um, makes sure that you're gonna transform your content, your regular web content into that markup version that I showed you guys early before. Uh, so this is kind of really uh, a small layer on the plugin. Once you have this ready and publish your uh, article uh, into web, we're gonna do, we are doing like a post into Graph API that we have that makes these available uh, into the Facebook side. So you, we are now the prefetching all your content and making sure that for the very first time that anybody shares your link, uh, we're gonna have all the information that we need to, to build that uh, as instant article. And as a key to, to, make sh uh, to, to know if we're gonna render or not the instant article version is the canonical URL. This is the, very, uh, the key to, to know that, for example, if you shared something on your timeline on Facebook, and I'm, I'm your friend of, your, of yours, and I see that story and I click it, the canonical URL will tell to my, the, uh, my, my device that, hey, this is already uh, on Instant Article, so let's render this instead of showing you the, 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 the browser view uh, to open that link. So that's how pretty much this works in, in kind of a simply, simplified way. Thank you. Hi. Hey. How does this work with SEO or um, the Facebook algorithm? I know, you know, does that, is there advantages for the um, instant versus just the regular way? It is just like the regular one. Like uh, we do scrape the content uh, just like any other link that you might share on Facebook. Uh, just like to, to get the image and get the title, get the description to, to show that preview start uh, on your timeline. So any, any content that is already on web will work exactly the same as an instant article. There is no difference. We don't like uh, have weights different for the regular web to the instant article one. Thanks. So are the instant articles displayed only from within the Facebook app, or are they also displayed if I'm browsing facebook.com from iOS Safari or Chrome Android? Good question. Uh, no, uh, we just uh, render the, the content of instant article in two apps right now. There is Facebook Blue app and the Messenger Blue, uh, the, the app. Uh, that we have from fa from Facebook, any regular browser that you, even if you are on the uh, like on your mobile phone, it's going to open as a web uh, version. So we can't actually prefetch because that is not our environment, right? So that's not a that's not a feature that you think is coming at any time in the future. We don't see this coming yet. Like we, we don't have any room uh, and not. Pre 
looking for this kind of solution yet. Okay, I guess we're done.